So this here is a painting video for our Master of Executions. So we just finished him and um, yeah, he looks pretty good. Um, he did take a tumble and so the spike on the top of the skull uh, got knocked off, but there's not much we can do about that at the moment. Um, in any case, if you're happy with this video or if you like what you see, stay tuned and I will show you exactly how we got here from where we started from. Um, if you want to, uh, add a like to the video or subscribe to the channel. They both help and you'll be ready for the next video we put out. Um, otherwise than that, stay tuned and I'll show you how we got here from where we started from. So this is a painting video for how to paint the Master of Executions. So we've got our model already built. He's put together and we've primed him with Chaos Black Spray. And in assembling him, the only other thing to notice is we didn't actually attach him to the base because he's got this cloak and this robe. It makes it a little easier to get inside there and, and paint up the inside of him. So that's the one um, sub-assembly we did. So I guess we're ready to get started painting him. So the first thing to look at with our Master of Executions, and uh, when I built him, I built him with the hood um, because I thought it looked pretty neat is that there's a lot of detail work over the top of the armor. So there's bones over this part, bones over here, the two cloaks hang over the armor, and and uh, so forth and so on. So I think what we're going to do is paint the armor first, which is usually the last thing I do. So we're going to start with some Abaddon Black, because while Chaos Black is black, Abaddon Black is a little bit darker, a little bit uh, deeper, so we're going to use Abaddon Black to begin with. And all we're going to do is paint the anything that's going to go black. So mostly the armor, the spaces inside of the shoulder pauldrics here. Sort of set that color in there nice and rich. The elbow pads, gauntlets, back plate, back chest pieces. So we'll do the rest of that. We'll meet back here in a few minutes. So once our, K, our Abaddon Black is dry, what we're going to do is start with the trim which we're going to use Retributor Armor for. So with our detail brush, we're going to slowly start filling in the armor bits. Which will light them up really nicely, help us see them, as well as frame the model really well for the detail work we're going to do in a minute. So this is our model now that the Retributor armor is finished and as you can see we did the front plate, the shoulder pauldrons around the bones, the axe trim, as well as the second shoulder pauldron. On the back we just did the area around the vent as well as the two um, air vents on the corner and then the other gauntlet trim there. And then we, in the inside we did both legs trims getting that finished because they'll be impossible to reach after. So our next color I think we're going to start with is to do all of the leather cloaks as well as the leather hood that's on him. So we're going to do that with brown and we're going to start with Rhinox hide because it's definitely leather and hide is how we base coat our leather. So with our detail brush we'll just start going over the cloak. So we'll keep working at this and we'll meet back here in a few minutes when it's all done. So this is our unit after we finished our Rhinox Hide Brown. And as you can see here, we did the cloak, we did the hood, we did the handle of the axe, and we did the holster on the back, as well as, and you can just sort of notice it, the hair on this first person right here. This first hell head he's holding. So, and then we did the belt as well, but that's part of the cloak. 
So those are done now, we're gonna move on to our next color. So for our next color, what we're gonna do is take into account the washes we wanna use. Our main first wash we're gonna do on almost everything down here is Agrax Earthshade. It's gonna go over the bone as well, so our next color to do will be the bone detail. So we're gonna do that with Rackarth Flesh. We're gonna do the bone on the uh, spikes as well as on the, the shoulders. We're gonna do all the bone on the shoulder pauldron, on the front piece of the shin, any of these teeth hanging down from the gorget here. And then because Rackarth Flesh is also skin color, we're gonna do details in the face as well. And then this is a bone plate around the neck too, so we'll do that as well. On the back half, we'll hit the spikes as well. So we'll do all that stuff and we'll come back here uh, the handle of the gun, I believe, is also an ivory thing, so that'll get Rackarth fleshed as well. This is our unit now that we finished the Rackarth flesh. We've done all of the bone, all of the bone work, all of the faces, all of the bones on the shoulders, bones on the shin. On the back end, we did the holster and the skulls and claws. And then we did the face, uh, the three little spots where the face peeps through the mask and then we did the bone collar and then we just did the skull on the front piece which we had missed so that takes care of all our our bone work and we'll be back for another color in a sec but before i do our shade we're going to tackle this helmet right here on the spikes in the back so we're going to make it a blood angel i believe so before we do that we're going to use some mephiston red to base coat it so we'll take a little bit of mephiston red and we'll start painting this helmet here. That's a very watered down layer, so it'll probably take two coats. So we'll start this, and we'll be back in a minute when it's all done. This is our unit now that we finished with the Mephiston Red and did the Blood Angels helmet on the top. So that finishes most of our base coats that we want to do, with the exception of the metal, which we will do afterwards. Um, the only next thing we're going to do is the hair on this head, which uh, according to the box art looks like it's going to be blonde. Looking at our choices, it appears that probably Xandri Dust is probably the base color for that hair that we're going to want. So the first thing we're going to do is with a very watered down layer, we're just going to color that section of hair right here. So that'll take two coatings. So we'll do that now and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. So this is our model now that we finished with that last little bit of hair and that finishes all of our base colors. So we're gonna start shading now. So we're gonna start with Agrax Earthshade, a nice new bottle. And then we're gonna comfortably place that all over pretty much everything here. Shading in all the bone work and the gold and the coat and the cloak and the mask and the head leaving the face not shaded or these faces not shaded because they are going to go a different color but everything else is going to get shaded now with Agrax Earthshade. So now that our Agrax Earthshade is dry we're going to shade the last little couple of places that we need to do. Mostly the face here as well as the face there. So that's going to get a little bit of wrinkling flesh shade. And we're just going to shade these faces like so. We're also going to shade the executioner's face. And then we're going to shade a little bit of the central part of the bones here. As well as the central part of the bones here. With all our shades done, it's time to start brightening the model back up. So the first thing we're going to do is work on the, the red, because we've already got it out. What this is, is just another follow-up layer of Mephiston Red. With a dry brush, and we're just going to use to brighten back up that red color around that shade. 
So we'll do that now and meet back here in a minute. The next step we're gonna take is to take a little bit of Wild Rider Red and just add a edge highlight. Like so, getting above the eyes as well, and the bridge of the nose. So now that the helmet is finished, we're going to start working on the brown of the coat and the mask and the holster. So what we're going to do with that is take a little bit of scrag brown. And then start dry brushing that all over the model there. So we'll keep working on this and we'll meet back here when it's all finished. So this is what our model looks like now that we've finished with our dry brush of Scrag Brown. And as you can see, that cloak looks much more leathery than it did before. So now we're going to go one more step further and add one last edge highlight to that. And it'll be with some Ungor Flesh. And we're actually going to do it with a very, very, very dry brush. And because this is very bright, we need very little of it. We'll do the cloths on the X here as well as the edge of that coat. And the hair. So something like that, and we'll do the head as well. While the hood and face and, and cloak are drying, what we're gonna do now is start working on the bone, and we're gonna add a highlight layer of Ushepti bone. Try to very lightly, directly brush, dry brush this on. Just like so. Trying our best to not fall into the black in between and we're going to do this to all of the bone color on the model It'll be a time consuming process but we'll do it now and we'll meet back here in a few minutes when this is done this is what the model looks like now that all the Ushapti bone is done and as you can see we've really lit up the bone areas on the model and the skulls on the top as well as the spikes and the horns and the holsters so now, so now what we're going to do is start lighting up the gold again. So we're going to use a little bit of Liberator Gold and with a very detailed brush. Just going to start tracing over some of the gold here. Giving it that shine. To polish it up after we shaded it with this earth shade. So we'll do most of this. We'll meet back here in a few minutes and then we'll move on to our next color. So now that we're finished with our gold highlight, it's time to start working on the non brown based colors. We're going to start with some grays and some metallics now. So the first thing we're going to use is this Eschen gray here. And what it is for is for the piping that comes out of either side of the chest. as well as the tubing that comes around the head. So we're going to do those three things with the Eschen Gray. The piping comes all the way to the back here, as well there's a few extra nubs here on the back uh, backpack for, for piping. So we're going to do all of those with Eschen Gray, and we'll meet back here in a few minutes 
once they are done. Now that we've finished with the tubing and the tubing on the back, and they stand out a little bit more, what we're going to do now is work on the metal. So we're going to take a little bit of lead belcher, and with that we're going to do the blade of the axe as well as the two power cables on the back. We're also going to do any of the exposed areas on the cable sheathing that we just did. As well, we're going to do some of the dials and buttons in the back here for the power back. The grate in the back here. And then any other, the gun that's over here. And then we'll do those and we'll meet back here again. Um, oh yeah, and then we're going to be doing all the chain mail. There's a little tiny bit coming out from below the arm here, as well as anything on the coat. And then all of the stitching, the staples, holding the coat together all around there. As well, there's a couple of staples in the um, hood as well. So we're going to do those. All of that with lead belcher. And then we'll wander back here again and see what we look like. So this is what it looks like now that we finished our lead belcher. And as you can see, we've done all the chain mail. Chain mail. It looks nice. All the staples are done. All through the coat all the way down. The few that are on the head are done as well. And then all of the exposed wiring from the sheathing is also done with lead belcher as well. And then the sword itself as well as the back power cable and things like that. So that's all done with our lead belcher. So now what we're going to do is shade all of that. So we're going to do that with a little bit of Newell oil. And we're going to be very precise with our shading. Because most of the other stuff is done now. So we want some shading in the chain mail. And there are a few patches of it. And a sharp-eyed person would have picked out the one that's in the back here as well. May as well shade this great system. Weapon. That power cable should be done. It will greatly benefit from having the shade on it, like so. Do the box as well, I guess. We'll do the axe just to push some of the shading into the edges here. Just to help that step out a little bit stronger. We'll do the same to the other side. Like that. And then we're going to do the power cables. There's a set right here. And one set there. And one set right here. Nice mouth. And we'll do the power connections in the back there. And then there's a respirator cable on that red helmet that we did. Right there. And that's about all the shading I think we're planning on doing now. While we're waiting for all that Newell oil to dry, what we're going to do is take a little tiny bit of Armin Blue. Now you can use Gilliman Blue, you can use Thousand Suns Blue, pretty much any shade of blue you like. But what we're doing is painting the eye on that far helmet there. Just like that. While we're still waiting for that shade to dry, we're going to start on another thing, another item. 
we're going to take a little bit of Jocaro Orange and with her very fine detail brush we're going to do the Eye of Horus symbol on the shin pad here And the second one located on this arm over here. Like so. Continuing with the Eye of Horus, I'm going to take a little bit of Uriel Yellow. Very, very detailed brush. Still doing detail, we're going to work on those heads now. So we're going to take a little bit of Kaisla Flesh. And we're going to dry brush that on a very fine detail brush. We're going to just do a little bit on the face here. Something like that. So there's the heads now that we've finished off the Kaisla flesh. We also took a little bit of Mephiston Red and just sort of uh, dry brushed the back of it a little bit there with a little bit of the Shanty Bone just on that little nub. Um, you, you can use whatever details you like there. Now we're going to bring out the eyes as best we can. So we're going to take a little bit of Newell Oil and a very fine detail brush. We're just going to try to drop a touch of shade. It's in the eye sockets there. And then for the mouth, we're going to take a little tiny bit of Carabur Crimson. drop that into the mouth there. Then we also took a little tiny bit of Yushabdi bone and we did the teeth right there. Um, once again your details may vary but I just wanted to clean that up a little tiny bit. And then one last detail we dry brushed a little bit of Averland Sunset just across the hair just to add a little bit more blonde look to it. So we have a brunette and a blonde uh, head hanging there as well. Finally, with a little bit of Abaddon Black and a very fine detail brush, I'm going to try to add that pupil. Something like that. Finally, we're going to start highlighting our metal and we're going to use some Iron Breaker for that. Slight dry brush here. I'm just going to cover in all of this area, lighting up that axe again. Let 
Setting up the chain mail as well. Any of the tubing, etc. So we'll do that, we'll meet back here in a minute. So finally, one of our last steps is going to be to take some Abaddon on black and start cleaning up any place where we went off of the armor. So as you can see, this chest piece here needs to be cleaned up a little. So we're getting a very fine detail brush and go through the rest of the armor, cleaning up where we need to until we're finished that step. Finally, we're going to put an edge highlight on all this black armor with some Thunderhawk blue. Something like that there. So we'll do that on all the other points of armor, and then we'll be back in a moment. So this is our finished Master of Executions, and as you can see, it looks pretty good. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope yours turned out very similar, and if so, uh, please feel free to like or um, comment on the video. If you want, uh, throw a subscription onto the channel, because that really helps out. And then you'll be ready for the next video we put out. Thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you the next time we have another video up.